Hey everyone, Evan Carrillo here with Cortex Goaltending. I uh, just wanted to share a drill that focuses on tracking and a little bit of the post-save response today. I'll ask my goalies uh, what do they think of when they hear the word tracking or when they hear the term tracking. And the overwhelming answer that I get from pretty much all of them is watching the puck all the way into your body. Although this isn't a wrong answer and it's a good answer, it's only half of what I'm looking for. So. The other half of what I'm looking for is watching the puck out of your body as well and trying to pick it up as quick as you can once you make that save. So for me, tracking can be broken up into a few windows. The window when you read the release of the puck off the shooter's stick, the window when the puck is traveling from the shooter's stick till it hits your body, and the window from when the puck hits your body and takes off in a new uh, heading for a rebound. And for me, one of the most important windows here, assuming you're making the save of course, is that window from the time the puck hits your body and takes off in a new heading for a rebound. And the reason for this is once goaltenders get to uh, a bit of a higher level, you know, you can call it uh, peewee, bantam, midget, above, whatever you want to talk about, when the shots start coming a little bit quicker, if it's uh, a clear shot from a straight line, goaltenders are expected to make that save most of the time. Um, like 96% of the time. Where we get into trouble often is on rebounds and from scramble plays or you know even a lot of power plays are designed uh, for that quick shot to really disrupt the penalty kill after that first shot is taken and once the rebound gets kicked out. So for goaltenders a lot of the challenge is what happens after the first save and making sure you can get yourself to a rebound. It's set up from another drill that uh, I got from Ian Gordon. Uh, Ian's a uh, Edmonton area goalie coach that I've been working a lot with lately. He's the goaltending coach of the Seattle Thunderbirds in the WHL. Very knowledgeable guy. Excellent goalie coach in the area. Very happy and very fortunate to be able to work with him. So how this drill starts, um, there's a few pucks set up sort of between the top of the circle and the face-off dot. There's one goalie standing in front for a screen allowing a little bit of room on the short side. So the goalie is going to start on the short side post. It's going to step up and challenge that shooter looking through that short side window. Shooter takes a shot using the second goalie as a screen. The puck should hit your pad and once it comes off you'll see another shooter from the far side driving in for a rebound. So the goaltender that makes the save has to pick up that puck as quick as he can and get across and get yourself ready for a second shot. So the second shot then, goalie returns back to his short side post. The shooter then walks the puck across so the goaltender is then forced to look from short side to far side around his screen and again make that save with again having that far side shooter driving the net and again having to pick up that puck off his pad as quick as possible. Up, Brock, way to fight for it. So it seems kind of weird that I would choose a tracking drill that involves a screenshot for that second shot, but my logic behind it is what I'm doing is I'm trying to isolate that third window for tracking from the time the puck hits your pad to the time it takes off in a new rebound heading. The focus of the drill kind of starts once they make that save off their pad and then they're forced to pick it up as quick as they can and to get on the new angle and make the second save for that shooter driving the net. Something important to consider is what the shooter sees. So what's the shooter's perspective when he's coming in and taking a shot? And oftentimes what's happening, um, especially for plays that are in tight, the goaltender will be relatively stationary uh, compared to the shooter. So consider a wraparound, for example. Shooter walks puck around the net, wraps it, and the goaltender gets themselves inside that uh, far post to make that save. It's that window where it becomes most important for a goaltender to be able to pick up that rebound. 
because for the shooter, they're coming around that net with a head of steam. They're carrying momentum still from the wrap, whereas the goaltender is relatively stationary inside the post. The other thing to consider too is after a goaltender makes a save, especially down low, there's a lot that we have to look around. So we've got the chest pads sticking out, we've got the, uh, the goalie mask, we've got a lot of goaltenders are wearing the plastic danglers off their masks, and it's a lot to look around, it's a lot to look through. It can be difficult to, to find a puck that's down at our feet or down on the ice. If you couple that with the fact that the puck is changing directions so fast and so in tight to our bodies that it's difficult to give ourselves visual access to that puck all the time, the shooter is a little bit further away so they're able to pick up that puck pretty much the whole time. So for any plays that are in tight, the shooter is usually able to make a play for that rebound without any delay or without any hesitation. And for the goaltenders, we have to work on eliminating our delay as well. And this is also a concept that is sort of centered in Lyle Mast's head trajectory, is eliminating delay. And by doing that, if we give ourselves visual access to uh, rebounds, especially coming off our pads from in tight, then we can eliminate any visual delay in picking up the puck off our pad or off our equipment. One of the best techniques that we have now for doing this is using your entire head to track down on a puck as it's coming into your body rather than trying to stay tall and just use your eyes. By using your entire head rather than just your eyes, you're actually able to track down on pucks and without actually putting any conscious thought into it, you're initiating a top-down sequence to start your rotation to that new angle to get yourself into position. So I hope this video was helpful or at least stimulating in some way. I'd be happy to uh, get into any further discussion with anybody. Shoot me an email at ek.cortexgoaltending at gmail.com. Thanks for watching and I'll see everybody next time.